thank you again, everybody, for joining us. And so I'm Brandon Ellis. I'm, uh, as Beth has pointed out, I'm the president of um, uh, of Elitech, and I'm trying to get this uh, crazy PowerPoint to work. So let's see. There we go. All right. So quickly, uh, just to run through the agenda, I'm just, just we just want to give a quick introduction, and we kind of already have. Uh, myself and Beth are involved in this this call. Beth is our marketing coordinator, uh, and again, I'm president of uh, of Elitech and and also one of the chief developers uh, of our uh, Data Commander and IOTA products. Um, I'll give a brief company overview. We'll keep this very brief because I want to get straight to the good stuff. Uh, just a review of traditional IoT requirements. Uh, I know that we have some folks uh, on the line that uh, are are more on the CNC side of things. So, uh, and then some that are more on the IT side of things and potentially on the control side of things. And so uh, I want to just uh, quickly lay those out so we're all on common ground and then uh, talk quickly about our IOTA Edge Server Appliance and what what is within it that brings us to this FANUC connectivity and dashboard demonstration that we really are here to talk about. So um, there is a chat window. Uh, that you should see on your um, on your online meeting window there. Uh, so please feel free to type in at any time. Type in a question. We'll be monitoring that, and we'll we'll jump to that. So this is not uh, by any means a formal presentation. So conversations and chats are just fine. But we do want to keep it something that's interesting to everybody in the group. So with that, let me get started, and we will move ahead. Maybe we'll move ahead. So PowerPoint's not moving very quickly. Sorry. Okay, so Elitech was founded in 2009, so just over a decade ago. Uh, our company uh, began as a systems integration company. We still have our systems integration group. It's very much a part of what we do. Um, but uh, in becoming, uh, as being an integrator, uh, we were doing, especially in the manufacturing environment, a lot of SCADA systems and things of that nature. So we've been in the IoT and, and the Industry 4.0 uh, type focus or smart manufacturing realm for, for quite a number of years. Uh, MES data products and on systems with the bingo boards and things of that nature, dashboards as we're going to be talking about today, and then uh, the CNC and industrial automation systems and also robotics. In 2014, uh, we developed our Data Commander product, uh, essentially um, uh, roughly two years ago. Now, almost two years ago, uh, we began moving to a new hardware platform, and that's what's called IOTA. And so that's what we're using today. The IOTA has now uh, taken all of the great things of the Data Commander and built upon it. We'll talk about that briefly. Our mission basically is to empower our clients. That's a different mission than many. We're not just about making great products, but we, we, will, we will measure the greatness of our products based upon how they empower you, the users. And so that's always our push. We always are focused on user experience versus just, you know, crazy technology and complicated things. So as I said, let's review quickly so we're all on common ground, a traditional manufacturing uh, system or a manufacturing execution system. Uh, in doing so, uh, most of the common components are a historical database uh, then you have your visualization and reporting data servers and web servers. Uh, on the bottom side, on the plant floor side, are the operational technology systems, and that's the PLC-based systems, the CNC systems, the robots and things that are on the manufacturing floor. And all of this, uh, this MES system is one spoke on the large enterprise resource planning or ERP system uh, will that's common in most manufacturing plants. And traditionally, we always connected it with uh, uh, connected those items, the data server, the, the web servers, and all the machines with a uh, PC-based software running on a PC environment. And then we, we use that with at least one common network. So this is how we define the MES. The issue that we came across as we were implementing these systems is we start looking at really a question of ownership. So IT, of course, owns the databases, the database administrators, DBAs on the web servers and that kind of stuff. The engineers typically own, or manufacturing engineers, process engineers, uh, own the machines. And then the network administration folks usually handle the networking. 
But the question of ownership comes in this piece right here. And so it's a PC, so it's really an IT asset. It's running software that's usually uh, specified by the engineering group uh, traditionally. And so the question of ownership comes into play. If something happens to that PC and middleware connection or the communications, who, who has to deal with it? And, and that's where a lot of uh, philosophical differences uh, reside. And so in 2014, we created our data commander. It is a standalone appliance. It is not PC-based. Appliance meaning that it's dedicated. Uh, it's not, again, like a PC. It doesn't, um, it doesn't require, or it's not capable of doing email and Facebook and Twitter and all these different things. It is specifically for handling data, communications, and mashups between the two systems. What it did was it allowed a common platform that IT was, was comfortable with because of the integrated uh, hardware-based firewall that's part of our patented design, our proprietary design, that separates the IT side from the OT side very, very securely. And so IT was happy with it and engineering was happy because it's a simple system to use. We'll look at that very briefly, but I say we look at that. What we're looking at is the IOTA. And so the IOTA took over for the data commander. And what we essentially did was we moved a database server, all of our reporting and all of our uh, communications to the machines onto this appliance-based platform. And so now all of a sudden we have things like IT ride-through or zero latency. What that means is, is network latency, since we can place this appliance it's a hardened appliance at the edge or at the floor, at the point of the CNC machines and things of that nature, that the latency on a network, uh, there's, there's not as many hops to deal with, there's not as many chances for disconnection. So we can ride through a lot of things if we are using the data servers that are on it. We still have the hooks to get into the upstairs systems, but now we can do that in a controlled way, and it's not production critical. So what's the advantage? Uh, basically, again, the difference is the IOTA uh, includes an edge-based server. That server can be uh, at the point of utilization versus a centralized data center or a cloud-based data center that can face disconnection. Additionally, uh, because of this, we can uh, reduce the delays in, in the network traffic and instabilities, uh, but we decentralize that data processing. And then, of course, just like the data commander did, the IOTA also can arrive at single ownership, which reduces complexity of who's responsible. So in the end, ride -through tech, uh, the ride-through and zero latency uh, allows data to be captured locally and not lost, and then, for many, helps them meet traceability requirements and things of that nature. Um, it's fast, it's repeatable, it can separate the machine networks from the upstairs networks, and it can run standalone. So with that, uh, and we talked about the security benefits already. So uh, with that, the capabilities that are built in, because we own the database server, because it is part of the IOTA, the edge-based IOTA, we can now implement things that we refer to as lean process workflow management or skip check. And that's where we're basically making sure that a traceable part uh, can, and we do this through our graphical tool, that's not going to be what we show today, but it graphically allows you to define the workflow process so that in a lean process, if a part needs to go through this machine and then through this machine and then through this machine in a certain order, it will watch out, it will check to make sure at the beginning of each scan at each process, we check to say, yes, it did go through the previous process and passed successfully, or no, it didn't. And that's a built-in graphical setup of the line layout. In addition, we have our dashboard designer. That's what we're here to see today, and that's what I'm anxious to show you. This drag-and-drop style dashboard builder allows us to create very attractive machine monitoring dashboards. It's URL based, so it will run on any browser based system from a tablet to a phone to a PC to whatever. So that said, let's uh, go ahead and get to that point. Um, what I'm going to do is get out of this, because we've had enough of PowerPoint, and let me pull up what I've got here. So first of all, I need to preface something for you all, and that is that I am 
we started in control systems integration. We are very much controls folks. So electrical engineers and, and whatnot, we can, we, our mainstay is machine PLCs and things of that nature. I can spell G code and I can spell M code, but that's as far as I can go. So I am not a CNC programmer. I am not a CNC person. You are CNC integrators. That's the reason we, uh, and CNC users, and that's the reason we uh, targeted you all for this. And uh, we hope, we hope that you enjoy what you're about to see. The other thing that you are targeted for is the fact that you are a FANUC CNC user or integrator. And so you're probably familiar with the FANUC focus drivers. Um, the focus drivers, uh, either you love or you hate, I guess, uh, but, but uh, it's a pretty powerful driver. We have implemented, implemented that into our data, I'm sorry, our IOTA platform. And we're going to talk about that. So quickly, we have two softwares we're going to be using. Our dashboard builder is one, but first I want to show you our workbench. And so this is where I would go and set up a connection to the device. Now I already had a connection here. I'll delete that so we so there's no uh, no chance of we don't want to do too much TV type magic, but we'll do a little bit for the sake of time. So I'll call this again Fanic. It's a 32i. I am using NC Guide. I don't have a mill here, so we're using NC Guide today. You see it running in the background uh, um, on a uh, actually another computer in, in our offices here. And so as I drop down the types, you can see a lot of different products that we communicate to. The FANUC CNCs. Uh, go from the 0 series all the way through the 15, 16, 18, 21, 30, 31, 32, and 35 eyes. Um, we also have some NC Guide versions because it's not the real thing. Uh, so I'll be using that today uh, since it's a simulation. There's a few differences between the actual uh, controls and the NC Guide, and so that's why we have that. Now, the IP address of this, uh, 30, this virtual 32i, the NC Guide 32i, is 10.0.0.114. That's been set on this, uh, it's actually on the PC, but that would be set on the controller itself. And that's really all we need to do. Assuming the default port of 8193, which is what Focus uses, uh, is, is available, which it should be, unless it's been purposely modified, uh, we should be able to validate this connection. What this tells us is that, yes, uh, I can see. Now, understand, our IOTA is actually sitting here on my desk beside me. This computer that we're viewing that's running the, the 32i NC guide is on the other side of our building, but it is on the same network. And so the IOTA is able to see that. So when it says it's validated and we set it up, now we can start it, and we see that it's started. And here's where the fun really begins with this part of it. We'll come back to this. But if I expand this out, you see the things that we are automatically reading. We're seeing our program name, current program name. We're seeing program numbers and things that are over here. Here's the 3001. Um, not much on the current sequence numbers and feed rates right now because we're not running. Uh, and there's other things we can see, access positions for X, Y, and Z, and those kind of things. Again, this just lets me read those in, uh, in kind of a snapshot method. So we see that we got 114.588 uh, on the X, that's here. 104.337 is the position we're reading from the Y, and then ultimately from the Z, uh, negative 19.9. So we're reading this information back. I have set up a project, again, in the, in, in the uh, from, from the point of view of, of keeping us uh, in, in our, within our time, I'm not going to create a new project. I'm just going to simply start this one. So when I start this, you can see things are loaded. I'm going to return to this in just a second, but what you're going to see is when I bring up the dashboard, um, I've got a few things going. So this has nothing to do with NC Guide. Uh, this is actually coming from another PLC on the system. Uh, showing torques, simulating torques uh, for two different tools, and also calculating OEE and, and updating uh, barcodes. I did that because I wanted to have something on, on, the, uh, on the, the dashboard to, to start with. I am reading, however, uh, the 32i statuses. I've already, I've already set these up. 
What I would like to do now is open up our dashboard builder, and you can see this uh, resembles um, what we're already seeing on the website. Now, granted, it's not the actual website. It is the builder tool, uh, but you can see that these two match. I'm going to take for, for, uh, for this, I'm going to take, you see we've got X position, Y position, feed rates, and things of that nature. Um, I'm sorry, I've got two screens here, so let me drag this across. What I want to do is I'll just go ahead and set up the uh, uh, 32i spindle. Uh, we'll monitor the spindle speed. So I'm going to name that. Uh, that that's, that's the internal name that we're going to be referencing. Uh, the units will be in RPMs. All right, title string again, spindle speed. Unit string, RPM. And we're going to call this spindle speed. We are going to take it because we can go up to nine, uh, up to 10,000 RPMs on the spindle. We're going to do that, and then this data drop down. There's, there's not. You can see there's some things set up here. I don't have anything set up right now. I'm going to go ahead and submit this. We can see that everything changed. I'll resize it here, make it look real. We can see our spindle speed, our RPM, the 10,000 uh, RPMs here. But I need to have something in that drop down. And the way we do that, and this is the interface between our dashboard and I'm going to flip it back up here again, our uh, what we call our workbench software, is first we go into manage, we go to database, <clears throat> and we add a new value. And I'm going to call this 32i spindle speed. In fact, I'm going to just take a quick copy of this. We're going to default it to zero. So this has been done. Now, if I open this back up again, now we see 32i spindle speed on our dropdown. And that's all we need to do is say, this is the data we want this instrument to, to follow. So when this changes, we want this to change with it. So we submit that. And I now pop over here, and again, we already have the, the project triggers built. Um, I, I don't want to take a lot of time in just talking about that. We have uh, on our website plenty of uh, how-to videos that show how to do this, and certainly we can work with, with folks one-on-one. -on -one. But I'm just going to duplicate this transaction, and I'm going to write to that spindle speed value that I just created over here. And what I'm going to get from it, remember, hopefully this looks familiar to you, that's our FANUC NC guide uh, device we set up, and we read, make this bigger, we read the uh, the part numbers earlier and stuff from the variables list. That's the same variables list. And we see that here's our spindle, and we want the spindle motor speed. And so simply by clicking on that and selecting that, we're going to update that value into here. We're going to do that every two and a half seconds. Again, if there's questions about this, um, uh, then uh, certainly use our chat window. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And so now that's being, dash, uh, being updated. And now I'm going to save this to our, to our dashboard tool. So once it's uploaded, and I'm watching right down here at the bottom of the screen, now it's uploaded, I will bring back up the dashboard and I'll refresh it. And what we should see is we should see this instrument show up here now. And there it is. We also should start seeing this. I'll minimize this so we can see our, our stuff. Right now our spindle speed, need to start it. So now we're seeing that. Let me make this a little smaller so we can kind of get them all squeezed in on the same screen. So you can see we've got 2,000 counts. and. Um, We've got a feed adjust here that I can adjust. And as we see that adjust, whoops, as I see that changing to 1599, we see this following it. Uh, we're watching our, our feed rates change. Here's the feed rate. Uh, we can change that. We can see it beginning to read that information in. So just like that, we've created a, a, a very attractive dashboard. Uh, we will be creating more and more of these drag and drop widgets. This is really the power of, of, of what we've got. We're communicating directly to uh, a CNC controller using the focus driver. And then I'll go ahead and stop it here so our positions will relax. And as we update, 
we come into where our feed rate, of course, is zero since I stopped, 114.516. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not suppressing decimals on my display. Certainly, we could do that. Uh, 44. 890, we're at 889, and then uh, 19.9 on the z-axis. Uh, we're still at 1599, and then, of course, our feed rate is zero. So it is totally possible to now begin to create URL web-based dashboards just with a drag-and-drop tool. This is actually hosted on our IOTA. And so just to prove that, our IOTA has two network uh, ports. One is at 10.0.0.251, and you can see that's the same address we have here in our browser. The interesting thing is the 192.168.1.62, that's the other port. That's the port that my computer is talking. So I'm talking on the private side network, and the CNC system and everything is on the public side network. So my PC, being a 192.168, is totally isolated from this NC guide, which, as you recall, we set up to be uh, a device that was at 10.0.0.114. So hopefully you see the power of what we've got here. We want to welcome your questions at this, at this point, and uh, we'll wait just a second to see uh, if anyone has any questions, and we'll answer them as we can. I will say this. Uh, the, uh, the Data Commander product, I'm sorry, the IOTA product is, uh, is currently designed with end users in mind. Uh, it is a standalone product. It's capable of connecting uh, multiple, to multiple uh, machines or devices. The licenses are based upon not how many, uh, this is the enterprise side, this is where we connect to databases. We can connect to as many databases as you'd like. It, the license is based upon devices. And so the items that you see here, from BACnet systems, if you're doing environmental type stuff, uh, Apex, Clico, and Atlas Copco type of uh, uh, screw driving systems, um, uh, FANUC robots, uh, of course the FANUC CNC we're talking about now, uh, the uh, MQTT, MT Connect, Machine Tool Connect, uh, that's popular with the Mazax and the Haas type mills, uh, Mitsubishi, of course, PLCs, Modbus, we can see the Omrons, the Rockwells, the Siemens, all of the major players in the PLCs that we communicate to and have for the last, for the last seven or eight years uh, using these drivers. Um, but anything on this list counts as a device connection. And so uh, based upon the number of connections that, that you are licensed for decides what you can connect to. And once you're connected, we, there is no limit to the amount of data that you can pull. Uh, that's not a license-based entity as some of the SCADA systems are. Uh, and then if you are using an upstairs SCADA system that's utilizing MQTT or things of that nature, as you saw, we can uh, publish uh, straight up to MQTT using our MQTT connection. All right. Well, I don't see any questions, so let me pop over again to PowerPoint, and I'll bring up – whoops – let me swap sides with you guys. I'll bring up the um, – by the way, there's our new training center here in Knoxville, Tennessee, where we do training on these products and others. Uh, certainly, you can feel free. And, and we give free popcorn, theater-style popcorn, and soft drinks uh, to all attendees. So there's motivation. Here's, uh, here's the links that I was talking about. Of course, our social media, certainly we ask that you please follow us, and we'll follow you back. 865-409-1555 uh, is our main number. Uh, free demo at elatech.com if you'd like to see this firsthand and have a, a more personable demonstration uh, or some, uh, some sentiment thereof. Uh, certainly send us an email at freedemo at elitech.com. And then, of course, our website is www.elitech, that's E-L-L-I-T-E-K, dot com. With that, Beth, shall we conclude? If no one has any questions, uh, we appreciate you guys joining us today and uh, looking forward to hearing from you and chatting with you more. Have a good afternoon. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.